<laughs> Robin. Oh. Bill Barrett Studio. Show continues during the break. Fucking. Uh, I don't even know where to go. Uh, first of all, Patrice, I, I almost brought Bill Burr to a hockey game, but it didn't work out because his Bruins were playing my Islanders last night. So yeah. I, I gave him the heads up. I was hoping to bring him uh, to that horrible arena, the, the fucking Coliseum. I like that place. So we were talking about uh, hockey a little bit, and then Patrice had to pipe in and just say hockey sucks. <laughs> yeah, Patrice, just not a fan I of did, hockey I did at it. all. I, 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 one thing I do, I, and, have, and I try to have a small bit of knowledge about something to say and, something. And I'm scared to even bring it up because you're the type of guy that probably would be able to convince me that hockey sucks. You're that strong with your opinion. It's not a we're popular gonna, game. We're going to leave here and go, you know what? Why do <laughs> I follow It's not a hockey? popular game. It's, it's just kind, not really? a popular game. It's kind of popular. <laughs> no one cares. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No it isn't cares. popular. You go up into Canada, and it's it's like the fucking second coming in Christ, but nobody knows. It's on money up there. What, what's going on? It cracks me up. You go to Canada, you turn around some of their bills, and, and there's like a hockey game going on. A, <laughs> it's yeah. the same it's soccer like argument. money. No. It, we know no, no, 40 no, billion no, people. No, no, we know everybody on the planet Earth loves soccer. Right. Right. Not America. No. That's it. It is what it is. I mean, hockey, why argue? Hockey needs to do a couple of things if you want to get into it. Ho- they let's make bring... hockey popular. Let's figure I can out. do they it can... right now. Hockey Fetch needs clean no. They need to accept <laughs> the fact that they're a rogue sport. They yes! for the last for the last 30 a years you're not all, baseball. All, all they've done is answer. try to appease people who aren't going to continue to not watch hockey. Fuck, no <laughs> true hockey fan ever had a problem with the fights, never had a problem with the barbaric let, never had a problem that there was. That's it. Two, I love it. people that go. There's two half times. Like mathematically, that even makes sense. <laughs> it's just like you're fucking retards. It, you don't get the game. You've never been to a game live. It's the worst game to watch on TV. Mm-hmm. You have to watch like five feet to the left of your TV screen to figure out <laughs> that what isn't even being televised. That there's a line change. People are like, why did he just dump the puck and just stop? Because, oh, cool. <laughs> believe it or not, skating at full speed for 90 seconds, you get a little windy. Yeah, yeah. You're exhausted. And you need, you need some other guy. Like, so, people just, they don't get it. Why do they let them fucking fight? amazing, what I Bill will is, say, What though. Bill is saying, they, they dump the puck so they can fucking change uh, the players that out. That is yeah. fucking great. You just nailed it. And it's then, like somebody and, who never boxed before and go, this guy's a pussy. It's like, dude, just stand and throw punches at air for 20 seconds and <laughs> yeah, see how, you'll see be how tired you are. You'll be fucking huffing and, and puffing. Yeah. Just to go with your point, too, they've been trying to make it, fa- you know, family friendly, too. Stop. When oh, I was with little, the mascots was and those ice kid. whores skirt, skating out to clear off the ice. <laughs> well, swords. terrific. Yeah, but don't, they could have those outfits a little fucking skimpier. Trust me. But when I was growing up... <laughs> When I was fucking, okay. when I was growing up though, I, I was a little kid enjoying the fighting. It didn't bother me. So why all of a sudden we have to yeah. like, you know? But that's everything though. You got to be fair. No, we don't have to be fair what because is, he just, why, why are they letting everything be like this though? Why like, is it, why is rated R so fucking horrible nowadays? But, but just focusing on his point, if if they accept they're a rogue sport. You're going to keep the people you got. There's people yeah. that are leaving the sport because they're like, this is not what I want in my hockey. So they changed so they what? In a, what did they change? They're not bringing in enough people, and, and some of the older, old old school guys are leaving because they're like, this is, no, this, this this is, is what they did. Other than the game. fighting, what's different? What's this this not, is what what's they different? did. This is what they did. You can't touch they, the goalie when he fucking leaves the crease. That nope. used to be scary as shit for but these th- goalies. This is what killed them. It was the combination of those Canadian teams coming down south, and then they added like five teams down south like in tampa florida uh-huh. nashville mm-hmm. phoenix mm-hmm. and then you had regular teams that you knew what they looked like they all changed their uniforms drastically like the sabers went from like blue and gold to black and red and white and it looked like you were watching the ihl that that whole era <laughs> it was terrible and then you also had the left wing lock the clutch and grab you there was a 10-year brutal fucking period not to mention the NHL always makes brilliant moves like, well, we have a deal with ESPN, but the USA Network offered us more money. Let's let's go to that one. Versus. Versus, versus here in yeah. New York. Yeah, they do that type of I don't even know where shit. Versus is, and I like hockey, hockey. Hockey gets the same coverage as high school women's golf. <laughs> no, it's... it's, it's and I can't even argue it. It fucking And then and they have other things. Like NBA is one of the greatest games ever hyped, and the last three minutes takes like fifty eight minutes to right, time right, out, time out, right, foul, right, foul, right, time right, out, yeah. T V time out. And I, th- like th- that whole game ends with people like un- taking unguarded shots. Right. Like I watching the Lakers Celtics championship last year where I watched the Lakers win a championship from the fucking foul line. Where one one they call like thirty eight fouls to seventeen on the other because the ref doesn't like Rashid. And has like these personal grudges. Like the NBA is fucking. I think the the NBA is hinged on right there. I think the NBA is absolutely filthy. 
It's it's fixed. <laughs> it's as fi- like it's he's not. He's not. Dude, they had a, they had a ref with mob ties. He's not busted. Off on this. And right, like, right, yeah, don't you yeah. think if you were on that officiating crew, you'd notice like, gee, Mark's calling it kind of close tonight. <laughs> gee, he's really letting them play. Like, like you wouldn't be he's able to pick on up this. on us. Don't look at me. I'm not going to jump in. I fucking it makes NBA, me sick. The I NBA should... loves uh, big market teams being in the finals, it. and it I seems think, to happen every year. Uh, I don't think they should have <laughs> anything with his eight foot niggas controlled by. Four feet white guy. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be fair. And that's how I feel about it. Not and since 1865. I'm just saying. Somebody who's not into me, because Rasheed Wallace, as we said, Rasheed Wallace's mother said, my baby is six foot 11, and he's mean, and but he's not a, a horrible person. These guys don't know how to deal with him. They don't, they, they're they scared of him. Mm. And I understand that. Uh, what's his name with the bowling ball shoulders? Dwight Howard. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, he got a great smile, but physically, this motherfucker is King Kong, man. And it's, it's a scary guy. But the, here's the reason I'm not into basketball anymore. I was a basketball. You were a big basketball I'm, guy. I'm a basketball in my blood, but I'm not. It's not like it used to be. I loved basketball, but what happened is is guys coming out of high school ruined it for me because I used to follow guys coming from high school, then they play four years of college, play a little college, then they. It's like a story, yeah, right? And <laughs> uh, and I I just stopped caring. At, like now, it's a freshman. You get a great freshman. He comes into college and he. Well, the neck tattoos. The neck tattoos did it for neck, me. Neck tattoos. That that kind of turned me because <laughs> we thought about it one day and I'm like, when did I stop following basketball? And I said, yeah, you know what? I think when tattoos. they introduced the neck tattoo. Of for some reason, oh, I just couldn't shit. relate to these guys at all anymore. I also don't like when you dunk a ball and then you stand at baseline going, oh! <laughs> and thumping your fucking chest like you just ripped down a building. It's just so fucking, like the worst one ever was Pau Gasol when he was a complete pussy in 2007. They, they actually drew a cartoon of him as the Tin Man, like he had no heart. It was fucking hilarious. Oh, and then, like the next year, in like December, he decides to show up. After choking in the finals, he dunks a couple of times, right? And then he starts thumping his chest. It's like, dude, it's a game in December. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's relax. I, I can't, I can't. It's not May yet. Wow. Yeah. Let's all, relax. all of that. That's another reason why I like hockey is Everyone... if you do something like that, someone will beat the shit out of you. And uh, and all they have to do is sit down for five minutes. It's like I, I find <laughs> hockey, there's a justice to it. Right. Where the, where the, the and... cunts... Get what's coming to them. And they, all, come up and they, they all understand yeah. each other. Like, the refs know these guys got to fight, uh, and they make sure it's a, a fair fight, unless it's the, the Penguins and the Islanders, like, last week. But or a yeah, guy like Matt Cook. Matt Cook is the dirtiest player in the league, and yeah. Mario Lemieux is just yipping, yipping, <laughs> yipping. <laughs> but he, up, he always bitched when he played. He keeps up like this. I'm going to retire. Well, that's what he said recently. <laughs> I'm going to take my stick and go home. Someone in the paper today said that does he even play his own fucking video game where you could blow off the hockey part of the Mario Lemieux hockey game and go right to the fighting. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, brilliant. And you, get more, and you get more points if you punch the guy in the head in the video game. <laughs> and he's but, crying about yeah, it. Yeah, give me the paper. And the I'll Penguins have had some of the most filthiest people in history. I'll, this is the brilliance of that franchise. I was saying this during the break. Is not only can they spot the Crosby before anybody else, but they signed the Ulf Samuelson, Matt Cook. I'm going to blow out your fucking leg, <laughs> so they don't have to worry about their stars going down. Sure, dude. That Matt Cook dude is filthy. He's dirty. Dirty. Listen, uh, filthy. So Mario bitched about the Islanders and Penguins game. If you're a sports fan, you understand that, okay? So Phil Mushnick, who I'm not really a fan of, but ah, but he's such a ray of sunshine. Yeah, he certainly <laughs> is. The guy, the guy hates sports. We say this every time. So why is he writing about it? Why don't you go find another fucking thing to write about? He goes, funny thing though. One day the kids in the neighborhood dumped the Mario Brothers uh, video games uh, for uh, Mario Lemieux hockey. Just one look, they love that video uh, video game. Not that they all were hockey fans. Okay. As a sideshow, Mario Lemieux hockey had a fighting mode. The kids could skip the hockey, click straight to the fighting mode. The Mario Lemieux video game even scored the fights, uh, knockout punches to players' heads worth the most. <laughs> with uh, with the head worth uh, the most. That figures. Yeah, so there you go. Eh, good old Phil Mushnick. Eh, as long as he took a few bucks for uh, uh, putting exactly. his name on that game. Didn't, yeah. this, didn't the strike do something bad to hockey? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, awful. I thought up every shit. Sport. Yeah, when you cancel an entire season and people but aren't I, watching but, already, that that kind of that kind of affects it. But I didn't. But Tonight, I didn't. Tampa versus Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> when they were when they were striking though, that it was so big it hit my ear. Meaning the news of it, right? Yeah. Like yeah. I didn't pay attention to hockey, but I knew it wasn't a bad. I knew it more. It got more. Put it this when way: it wasn't on. I fucking knew more names than Ovechkin and and Crosby or whatever yeah. Sidney Crosby. I. 
hockey was in the conversation. Yeah. And then that fucking strike happened. Well, and I'd never heard of hockey again. So I want to say, and the ratings have gone up every year since the lockout for the NHL. I'm not sure if that's no, true. No, I think, I think the hockey is that true. Hockey it, is actually great right now, but, uh, there were certain things like, I don't like that they got rid of the red line. I thought they should really? just, they should have just, they they just called it an illegal defense. With the left wing lock, you can't bring that forward yeah, yeah. up. He has to stay up in four right. check. Then you'd have those great rushes again. You'd have the three on twos, the two on ones. That, and then they just decided to get rid of it. And it's uh, now I, I trying felt, to watch it on TV. You get like whiplash. Yeah, <laughs> I felt like it just opened up the whole fucking game, though, man. Uh, These guys got way too quick and way too big to deal with that red line shit. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I have no idea. I love that they changed that rule, but huh. mm, whatever. <laughs> I know. What does it matter? <laughs> it's just just at hockey. Like, it's like, it's like you just hate hockey. I don't hate hockey. No, no. I just did you see the Winter Classic? That when they played outside yeah, in that's Pittsburgh. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, fucker, they played did on the moon. Did you see twenty four seven on HBO? I heard it. I heard it was phenomenal. The twenty four seven on HBO was great, man. I'm sorry to see these guys. There's no reason to apologize. That's all right. I'm just saying sorry because I like to be open. To think, I like to be open to things that people love a lot. And I go, I right, let me, I got, I try to watch. I used to, like I told you, I used to sell peanuts and popcorn at the at the garden. And I would go, please, somebody tell me about hockey. And I learned there's offsides, there's certain things. And, and I think a lot of not <laughs> liking a game is you don't know the rules. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And and you know some of the rules of why this guy is shooting by himself mm. against the goalie, or why there's no goalie. Like if you don't know, you go. The goalie's yeah. missing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's great. you just are lost. But if you know the game and strategy, it's a, any game is good. The goalie you know, have to take a leak. Yeah, where's where's the goalie? Goalie? You know what kills me is every four years <laughs> when the Olympics come around, I pray that Al Michaels doesn't have to explain uh, the entire game, and he you. always does. Always. <laughs> That's offside. When a player without the puck <laughs> goes over the blue line, that is called icing. Sometimes it is waved off. <laughs> You're just going like, is, is it ever going to catch on? The no, javelin is so explanatory. Imagine think, if every game they had to explain baseball. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Instead of a ball, they use a puck. <laughs> explain baseball to me. That's another sport. I don't give a shit. The baseball class, hey, they playing baseball in fucking Spain. I don't. It's just a boring game. Not a fan of baseball as much as I used to be. It just it's bores a, me to tears. And I know it's talented. For me. I know you got to be talented. You know, what, you know what baseball is good for? It's better in this these days than it was in the old days when you just had, like, I remember going over to my grandparents' house, and my <laughs> grandfather would be sitting there watching the Mets with that big clicker that used to go, like, clang, yeah. clang, <laughs> with two buttons on it, on, off, and volume. And uh, he'd be sitting there watching the game, and, and it was boring as fuck. I'd be looking going... What the fuck? He's just waiting to die over there? Uh, now, though, there's so many other things to do while you're watching TV that it's cool. You could fucking play online poker. You're fucking, like, cruising the web. Do you realize this is, a, this is a commercial for why baseball sucks? Exactly. I thought you were going to go. Right. No, no, you're right. But the thing is, it could be on in the background while you're doing other shit, and then you could look up and go, Oh, look, a triple. But why? Where is that? No, no, no. But where's baseball getting all this money? If it's t where's baseball getting all this it's money? It's a from? huge sport to go out to. Uh, that's People our love hockey. Going yeah. to the fucking games. I, it's nice weather. It's outside. You're like fucking ah. The, just going to a ball game, which by the way, unless you got really good seats, sucks ass. You don't see the replays. You don't fucking see shit. But they it, they took that out of the game because now these parks, it's it's like an amusement park. You don't. You, you, oh, I know the stadiums you hang on now. Your, you hang out in your seats for two innings. The and they're like, let's, let's check this place out. Like, oh, let's right. go to water fucking, slide. I'm gonna go to the Macy's down <laughs> right. at the end of the fucking right. Uh, right. by the it's, Memorial. Park. The, the new Yankee Stadium is I the played. funniest one ever, where they have that guy behind glass carving up steaks. Right. Yes, <laughs> I that took most people that guy. can't afford. Right. Right. Stadium, yeah. What right. about Yankee Stadium? <laughs> Fucking Morton's what about, guy carving up steaks. What about Yankee? Yeah, it's a baseball game. Your feet are supposed to be sticking to the floor right. as you're walking around. I went to Yankee Stadium finally, and uh, around the fourth inning, because I'm not a Yankee fan, I'm like, I want to check this place out. And my buddy goes, Let's go to the museum. I'm like, They have a fucking it's it's the museum. Oh, yeah. So I, we're like, yeah, that, we, we'll get right in. It's the fifth inning, right? We go there. There's an hour wait for the museum. We're like, how is there an hour wait for the there's museum a during a fucking game? There's a yeah. game going That's on. That's how baseball is. Well, changed. you know, when you watch the uh, the Yankees games and you don't see anybody sitting around home plate, aside from the fact I know that, yeah, that yeah. it's really expensive, when you get those seats... You you can walk in, you can eat the whole game for free, like it, well, not for free. It comes with the price of the tickets. Yeah, yeah. So just pick a guy, 
Just see a guy sitting there. A couple innings will go by, and all of a sudden the guy isn't there, and you watch. He won't be there for like three innings. He's just <laughs> stuffing his face with prime rib and all this shit. And then he finally comes back, and it looks so bad because this is this is like the the, the biggest the franchise seat. in that's sports. The shot. And it always looks like they have like eighteen people yeah, at the park. Yeah, because yeah. that's the only part of the park they show. Dude, I had those seats one time. Somebody gave me a hookup, and I I chowed. I chowed well, and I gave, I gave the too. finger to somebody at home <laughs> when they called me on my cell phone. I wasn't even watching the game, dude. It was ridiculous. And you got to get your money's worth. Uh, shit. Right? Oh, yeah. You feel like you got to eat your money's worth. But this is why football is uh, king. Football's king. Is Football's right. king. It's just I'm not, king. I'm not even going to argue with it's that. It's once a I week. Still love the if that, it's every only game a couple counts. of months. Every it's game like, counts. Every game counts. It's fucking, you know, it could be a career ender well, every, for anyone every at any moment. Games, four games. Like, no, every game. 12 and 4. Counts. 11 and 5 is possible. You you can miss the playoffs. Yeah, but if you're so two games five back. Games. Right, right. If you're two games back. Is like being like nine games oh, down in baseball. in baseball. Right, 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 right. But the only problem is baseball has 179,000 games. <laughs> and they, I love it. They're playing two games in one day. Baseball's like well, oh, that's a why <laughs> And that's why it's funny that people actually gamble on on sports where, where where they have the dog days of summer or like NBA hoop. You can tell when somebody has like some pussy in town. They just <laughs> drag an ass or they're thinking about it, and you just like like you can't bet. Like a buddy of mine was betting the other night. He's going. He's like, oh, the Heat are playing the Pacers, man. He goes, I'm telling you, this is a gift. And I go, I don't know, man. Indiana, it's a boring town. You have no. They might just they might just say fuck it. And, this is game number seventy eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no motivation. But football, when it's you game seventy eight. But you can't lack in football because no. somebody will paralyze you. Someone fucking but, kill you. But the other side yeah. of football, my Jets, you know, we had a, a big time run, and I don't want to start over next year. You know what's funny? Did you know what had such you promises, get one shot. by the way? Huh? He's doing the, the I promise I know, you. I know, like, but, enough of you when now, your team, Rex. Yeah, yeah. When your team See, almost makes it and you don't, you don't make the Super Bowl, you like, you get this feeling of, I don't want to start all over where every game Did is you like, hear what he said? He said, this is what he said after a year of talking shit and never owning up to it. <laughs> yeah. He goes, he goes, That's why I um, love him, by the way. <laughs> he goes, uh, last year, they just talked to him like a week ago. He goes, last year, I thought we were going to win a Super Bowl. This year, I know it. Oh, it's shit. like, what are you going to say after next year? This year, I really, really know it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he's one of those guys who just calls it. You know, that guy, that guy likes to be the, like, dude, I called it. Mm -hmm. They call it every night. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm telling you, blow out. I'm telling you, blow out. Mm -hmm. And then one day it finally happens. What I say? I told you. What I say? See, I've been saying it. So they're uh, fucked. There's a salary cap this year. Man. They're done. Yeah, football's yeah, he's done. Only thing I don't he's like is, is Goodell. I just, I'm not a fan of his. There's something mm. elitist about him. He bugs me. And he's, um, and this fake, uh, confidence. Players don't want to be hurt thing. Uh, uh. Like, like, it's, it's stop playing. It's something else going on. <laughs> yeah. Just stop your horse shit. Just let them, like, guys like James Harrison, oh, just let them die. Let them, <laughs> let them be warriors. And that's the only thing, but football is so. Fucking perfect, man. What, what perfect game? What about your Celtics, though, man? What about them? I used to be a big Celtics fan. The Black Celtics. I love the Celtics. I'm you happy made, that they're relevant. You made us all start ta uh, calling them the Black Celtics and everything. Yeah, because they are. And but, I know Boston. Know what... I know the pain and suffering uh, of these white people watching these niggas run around winning. I, I fucking enjoy it. With their shamrocks on their back. Oh, you and their little fucking, fucking... All these people from the movies The Celtic, Town. Yeah. They're saying that. <laughs> fucking uh, uh, Kevin uh, Gadnett. <laughs> fucking sickening me. <laughs> I, I like the town. I like the town. I mean, you know what's funny? They, they, they look at them the same way they always did. It's not like they they didn't notice yeah, in like the true. 80s when it was a bunch of white people. They were still probably, ah, fucking Dennis Johnson, dude. <laughs> Johnson. Freckle face you know fuck. What? <laughs> Just give it to Larry. I don't the think fuck it kid. was as bad when Larry was the face. Like if Luke Herringody became the face, it would be Luke and the fucking Bobettes back there. doo de doo Like Frankie Valley. <laughs> Frankie Valley in the ink spots. Because <laughs> I know Boston. It's painful. Yeah. But yeah. they love winning, but it's painful. But I'm telling you, that's why the Patriots are so beloved. I love the Patriots. I can't, that's the one thing I can't get out of my system in terms of Boston yeah. is the sports and the food. Two things. 
Sports and the food. I love Boston food mm. and Boston sports. Uh, What's Boston is, known for food wise? Nothing, but where the it's okay. the best you food. It's the best food of anything. There. I'll put Boston anything up against anything. I lived anything there for else. years. Yeah. I can't think what they eat traditionally. It, the ch- you know, you got Philly, yeah, Philly's yeah, the cheesesteaks. Oh yeah, the chowder. But, yeah, but Boston, that, Boston doesn't want anything. Fucking platter, kid. <laughs> Get a <laughs> fucking scorpion <laughs> bowl with the chicken fingers. Boston Chinese food. Bill and Bob's roast beef. Cambridge. Yeah, it really is. They don't fuck around. Yep. It's tremendous, but but you know the Black Celtics. I love them. I'm just saying that the season is 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 pathetic. Yeah. It's just it's just. What, it's what did pathetic. Russell win? Like uh, ten or 11, 11. championships? Eleven. Eleven. And they still hate him. What, what does no, this guy no, have to no. do? I mean, I think the, all those people died off. The people that shot at him when he was going, and then <laughs> he was winning championships, and they still shot at his house. <laughs> yeah, they, back when he was winning the championships, they, they really didn't have an open mind, man. Good fucking call, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> to work for you, Bob Cozy. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be able to score now if you didn't fucking if he didn't pass it to you. <laughs> how, how bad do you think you want to be traded? But uh, they didn't trade uh, many players back then. You you pretty much played for one team when Russell was playing. Well, his story not is a lot it, of trading. Think, no, before free Red agency was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. In baseball, baseball basically, if you were in the Yankees organization and they, and you were a shortstop and they had Derek Jeter, you were fucked. Right. You couldn't leave. You just you just played your career in the minors. Oh, yeah, God. Even damn. though you knew you were you're good enough to play on any yeah, and team. contracts Leave, after your Remember contract. All that shit? <laughs> you're you're like, gonna have to get out of that seat. You felt like you knew the players because year after year after fucking year, you yeah. saw the same faces. <laughs> and Bill Russell still, he's just an ornery old coot now. We got yeah. Triple H coming into Triple the Triple H. Studio. Very busy day. Triple H. Oh, hey, hold on, uh, fuck, uh, Bill. What are you promoting? Because it's going to get really. I'm in uh, uh, Count Basie Theatre, Red Bank, New Jersey. Tonight? Go. Yes, tonight. All right, and Patrice has got Triple the Big H. Comedy Central special tomorrow night at ten. And now we got Triple H in studio. What's up, man? How you doing? Look at you, all sharp. You fucking don't age, brother. I right. know, right? A few years go by, we see Triple H, and he he looks like the it's same exactly fucking the guy. Same. Get all kinds of work done. We're sitting here, looking healthy, rotting. sir. Looking, looking very healthy. Kinds of work done, huh? Yeah. Are you, very, very healthy, <laughs> goes, man. Yeah. Yeah. What are you using on your skin, man? Botox. Nice <laughs> 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 and healthy, man? my friend. And you got to dress like that Giant. in the morning. No sweats, nothing like we're, no, we're doing. I, I, uh, you got TV, probably, right? I do. Yeah, I have TV. And you, you guys uh, can. Uh, you got to look for radio. You yeah, know I mean? certainly. Do. Yeah, I yeah. just. I already spilled coffee on my shirt. I don't it care. Doesn't about matter. Spill coffee on my shirt. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. even matter. You know, uh, Patrice and Bill, two really, really funny guys. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Patrice so O'Neill and Bill Burr. How you doing? How are you, sir? Right. He don't yeah. remember. Yeah, Patrice he, did a little time in the WWF. He he, he, he oh, shouldn't remember. And, I, and if he, he doesn't, right. I, I love that he doesn't. He was he was on your father-in-law's uh, private chat a couple times. <laughs> but I was in the back. Really? <laughs> who'd, you, who'd, you, who'd you work for? For sure. I was I was. Uh, they were hiring writers at the time. Oh, okay. So I had, I was a. Uh, no, come on, talk about it, Patrice. That's why I'm bringing it up, though. You can see he's like, I don't know you, motherfucker. Like, I want to say you were great in Blade Three, but like that's that's what we want. But I was I was on the back. It was I was the most fun. You know, people in this world, it was fun. It was like you were on the plane because at at that time, um, all the um. You know the the, the Coco Bewares and the uh, Brooklyn ba- b- Brawlers. The Brooklyn Brawlers. They'll be. They have to take a cab to the next day. <laughs> uh, it was. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was Triple H. Yeah, who was And he was Triple H at the time too. He wasn't. Uh, uh, he wasn't Hunter Hearst. He was Triple H at the time. Mm-hmm. It was. Uh, uh, the Undertaker was on the plane, and it was one more biggie on the plane at the time. And uh, and 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 then the family. So I sat in the back, and one of the guys who had been there for a couple of years was trying to get me to be like the butler, like one of the other writers. And I go, I don't, I don't really, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and, and that's why I had to leave because it was like you had to, you have to be very company. Like like yeah, of you, course. Stephanie fired me. She fired me four times in one. Co- you, you know you're fired. Back? I, no, I just <laughs> I just said away? okay. I said I said I understand. I, and she, she said you're fired, man. <laughs> I 
said, Stephanie, I, I know you got to fire me. I, I love you. I, I, you you're fired. She said you're fired four times. Four times. And I Wait. said, I understand. I fucking understand. Why are you being hostile? <laughs> <laughs> I understand. We miss Stephanie uh, Triple H. She used uh, to do miss, our show all the time. Yeah, I'll tell you what. She misses being around it, too. She yeah. actually was. Tell her we said she hi. Was, we she wished she could have come in today. She she said to say hi to you guys. Yeah, well, the uh, her, her introduction into the uh, public form of uh, WWF at the time uh, was just amazing. It was probably the most fun time uh, of wrestling. That was like the golden age when uh, we were watching. Yeah, we were... Uh, obviously, you still got plenty of people watching, but that time when she was in that boiler room locked up to the, yeah. the pipes and shit, and just... Trying to make it look like she's upset and crying. <laughs> it was classic. <laughs> was the whole <laughs> test thing back in the day that test push, the marriage thing, and the the you know, the kidnapping in Vegas and all that? Was <laughs> you, were you and, and your wife, was y'all together then? No, I didn't even know her. You know, and honestly, I wasn't even involved in that storyline. But uh, we had a, a writer at the time, this guy Vince Russo. Vince was great at coming up with stuff and having no way to get out of it. Oh, shit. So he had, come up, <laughs> he, had, he had come up with this concept that um, to bring Vince's daughter in and uh, have her get involved in a relationship with one of the guys to do a marriage. Because everybody loves mar you know, weddings on TV. It was his <laughs> rationale behind this. So he puts her in this relationship story with this guy, Test. And uh, comes time for the wedding the first time and he Vince is like, so what are we doing with this thing? Like, <laughs> yeah, where are we going? I, I don't know. You know, so they, they literally, <laughs> this is how ridiculous our world is sometimes. <laughs> they, ridicul they, they came up with a storyline where somebody threw a garbage can or something, hit Steph in the head, she got amnesia and didn't know who Test was. <laughs> 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 to buy us a few weeks so Holy we could figure out what we were doing. <laughs> that is brilliant, right? And uh, ah, shit. so um, now they've got they've got this situation where she, eventually she's still got to she got to know who this guy is the whole thing, and so they don't know what they want to do. And the, Vince Russo leaves the company. Oh shit! Oh, and like shit. the middle of the night, he just takes off and goes to work for the WCW at the time, where it was a competition. And uh, I remember Vince being like, well, holy Christ, we're stuck in this storyline. This, <laughs> this thing now with a guy with no clue how to get out of it, and now he leaves. And so uh, He probably I, knew he was leaving. He's like, you know how bad I fucked him? Yeah. He's having panic attacks. Can't he possibly he might have been wanting to leave before he had to tell Vince, I don't have a solution. So, <laughs> yeah. um, But then he, uh, I was in a storyline with Vince at the time. And just one day and sitting thinking about it was like, God, we should do something. That would be a perfect role. What would I do to get to him? Right. Marry his daughter, you know, in real life, too. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so that's how the story got switched <laughs> to me. You know, they really had no intentions of her ever doing a wedding on TV that it was going to get screwed up. But right. It, it was a really convoluted that's story. And then it, our stuff ended up being huge, you know. So things, do, things do they still run like that, kind of, where you sometimes have a storyline where it's like, we have no clue with it? Well, not really. Usually we try to have a generalized idea, but a lot of times, like even when we did the Steph wedding thing with me, right? So I pitched to Vince this idea about, uh, you know, I'll take her in a drive through to Vegas and, you know, <laughs> yeah. Mickey or drink or something she doesn't know, and I get married to her. The whole thing was just for yeah, me to get this. Or a roofie or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you did, though. Yeah, she really was did. knocked yeah. out in the yeah. back of the car. Yeah. I remember that push. But, yeah. but you like, can't do it anymore. It's the limp hand with the yeah. ring and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't do that on uh, TV no, you anymore. Can't slip unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, they would tell you. only in the movies now. You can do that. Yeah. Right. Nine but, eleven. Um, no more roofies. <laughs> so, you know, we uh, we just went down that road with the story, but like. It was just meant to be to get me into a situation in a match with Vince where I would get a title shot and the wedding would be a null. That was it. That was right. our, our thing. It was like a quick thing. And, man, when she went out on TV that next night and they were chanting slut. Oh, and, my God. Like the yeah, crowd yeah. turned on her so totally. heavily. And, and we were like, I remember sitting next to Vince at gorilla position. I didn't even know Steph. And uh, she walked out, and they started reacting. We both looked at each other like, oh, my God, this is awesome. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we got to run with this. So the pop, a pop, a pop is a pop, right? Like, no matter yeah. whether it's a heel pop or yeah. good. It's like, has there ever been any reaction where <laughs> it hurts your feelings? Like, it's, damn, man, I, I didn't want to be 
an asshole. I was, yeah, I was trying I'm, to be nice. Now um, I'm an asshole. I, you know, I don't know. I, to me, in our business, it's just a reaction's a reaction. You know, and, and I made majority of my name and money in the business getting heel, booed out of the arena. Sure. You know? yeah, but now yeah, it's this sure. weird thing where he's your. You can't be a heel no more. It's impossible. Yeah. It, it, towards the end, when I was still a heel, um, you know, I was working with Cena. And I was supposed to be the bad guy, and he was supposed to be the good guy, and I was getting, you know, at, at least half the arena cheering for me. Yeah. And that was before they were really fully booing him, so, you know. <laughs> full, full on what's, boo, yeah. what's yeah. the most ridiculous storyline, like when you were coming up? That one just, wasn't good enough? Huh? <laughs> that wasn't good enough. I'm just saying, if there was, I just figured that oh, that was God. at, like, the most professional level. I'm just saying, you just break into wrestling. I mean, there's got to be like like stand up comedy, uh, like open mic wrestling kind of. Mo uh, right, most I, ridiculous angle ever is one that I was involved in, unfortunately, and and it still gets talked about to this day. It's called the Katie Vick incident, <laughs> and it was this ludicrous story. Vince got in his head that he wanted the characters to be more sympathetic, and we, you know we have Kane, right, who's like the this monster. Yeah. He decided that in Kane's backstory, Kane would have had uh, have killed a girl <laughs> by accident. Of so, course, well, it could happen. So Kane, and like, Vince creates this this ridiculous story, and, and this will get much better, trust me, where Kane has to go on TV in full monster regalia and tell the world that like I was young, I was I didn't know how to drive a stick very well, the roads were slippery, and uh, you know the car got out of my control and and she died. It wasn't my fault. Uh, Unfortunately, I'm in the storyline with him. I was champion at the time, and we were wrestling over the title, and I'm in the storyline with him. So now it, Vince gets obsessed with us bringing up this dead girl to Kane to the point where... <laughs> Oh, you're about I to go. It, you're, you're about to really love it. To the point where he comes up with an idea where I am supposed to dress up like Kane and go to a funeral home and have sex with a corpse in a casket. <laughs> So all, the whole way there How now. He pitch this shit? The whole way I'm like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But so the whole way there, I'm trying to like convince him, Vince, we really got to make this funny. Like this has to be very funny. Like I'm, I'm really making a joke out of this. No, no, no. It needs to be dark. And it needs to. <laughs> oh, no. So like, <laughs> we already got that with the necrophilia. <laughs> yeah. I want to try to lighten it up now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not even married at the time to to staff or anything like that. I, I'm, we literally go to a funeral home where we rent out one of the rooms. We have a casket with a dummy in it. I'm, I'm, I'm in Kane's mask and stuff. Holy shit. And, uh, and, and he, you know, ha have the guy that is g eventually going to be my father in law yelling at me to have sex louder with the dummy in the coffin. And while we're doing this, I'm in, I'm in a skin colored thong on top of a dummy in a coffin. In a funeral home, and the guy from the funeral home, the like the mortician guy, opens up the door, sticks his head in, and he's like, "Could you guys keep it down? I got a funeral." In the oh shit! <laughs> That's a ridiculous storyline, my friend. Oh damn! Yeah, ah, oh, it's awesome. But, wow. <laughs> but Vince don't. From damn, the two man. or three days I was there, you just <laughs> it, I had enough to see. It was amazing. It's really like he doesn't pitch. Like I don't know. The hierarchy of, of of the guys that like really get a lot of stick time and they get the the, the stars they could say Vince I ain't doing that shit I don't know but I know the I know I saw one guy uh, Tiger Ali Singh he had a turban and he begged he was begging Vince <laughs> he said his whole family felt he was desecrating his <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to wear the turban he didn't want to wear the turban and he's like please you know the, you and, get out there with that turban but on. no he didn't get out of <laughs> no, it wasn't like it wasn't like Tiger was in his face. Tiger would ask somebody who would ask, and I was just because the writers have complete access to everything. So I'm just looking, and he just goes, "Nope, he's gonna wear the turban." <laughs> and this guy is like my family hates my guts, my religion, and I just go. I, That'd be like, uh, now put the bone through your nose. Put I told you, nose. I told you on the show though that he's the three. It, there's only been three people in my life that I ever met that I, uh, you my dudes and anybody that where I was, my heart was beating. He's and I looked at him like, holy shit, powerful. And he so was, it was one. me, Vince. Who's the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was Jordan. It's, it's too bad, Jordan, uh, Bird, and then Vince. Oh, you wow. met Bird. 
Well, I used to work at Boston Garden. Fucking it. But he never talked. And, and, and all three of them never talked. You just, you just right, felt, right. Yeah, you yeah. just felt that shit like that. Vince does have an <clears throat> ominous presence. But he listened. He was the, like this the thing small. that amazing. He's the, he was the best listener I've ever seen in my life. He never, as you in his writing things, he never made, you would suggest something that probably was ridiculous when you think about it, but he would never say that was stupid. He would, he would always <laughs> no. sit there. Hey, he, greenlit, big, he greenlit the coffin. Thing. Yeah, that's what I was say, yeah. Vince is a stupid. big believer in there's no dumb ideas. Like, or he'll take a stupid idea and turn it into a good idea. Yeah. Or, I mean, he's really big in that. And let, let me just say that if there, that, I know that kid. And if he was saying he didn't want to go out in the turban because he was desecrating his family and all that stuff, he was so full of crap on every level. <laughs> <laughs> that I guarantee you, Vince was like, he's full of crap. He's, he's trying to get shit. something else out of it. But this. I didn't tell a story. I didn't tell a story like based on like based on like uh, Vince was a fucked up guy. It was based on just the the boss right. thing. You he, know what I'm saying? Truly the boss. It's just. And, I, and, I always t say know. it like this to me. He's the general. Where everybody else that works for him, where the like the army and the lieutenants and all that stuff, he's the general. And what, I, what, eventually, he goes charge up that hill and die, and you go, all right. And you do it. Who yeah. were we talking to recently? We're trying to figure out what Vince does for uh, fun. Because he works all the fucking time. What does he do when he's just not doing the wrestling thing? that he like, Something he likes doing. He, he works out. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he literally, you know, he's 65 years old. He will work, like, he'll get to the office mid-morning sometime. He will work sometimes until 9 or 10 at night. And then he'll go downstairs and he'll train. And he'll train for a couple hours, and then he'll either finish his emails or he'll go home. He sleeps a few hours. He's one of those people that just doesn't, doesn't sleep. sleep a lot. He'll, you know, for weeks on end, he'll just get three, four hours of sleep or whatever, yeah. and then he'll crash for a day, and then he's back on track. It, it, he's his work ethic is unbelievable. Like, just as an example, this week we came home from uh, we were in uh, San Diego on Tuesday, and we came home now. He, Sleeping on the plane is not an option. So, uh -huh. like, we flew home after the show. We got home at, like, 7 in the morning. He's back at the office at 10 o'clock. Now, Jesus. back at the office. But, Sam, weren't you saying something about Vince? Was he was he out or? Oh, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sam? <laughs> what, what happened? What is Sam? going on? Man, Sam got well, weird. I just want to know. Yeah. Where are you going? No, he was, uh... He, he's back now because he was on TV. But for a while, after the Nexus... Right. Took him out. I'm sure he was hospitalized or something. <laughs> you know, right, 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 right. Even Triple H is, is embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was in a coma. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's when he must have been when he was crashing. Yeah. He was uh, resting. I, okay. I, I know it's been here since uh, a while since I've been here and stuff like that. But last time I was here, he was making out with homeless dudes and stuff <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Has That's something Sam, happened right. to him since then? Yeah, he seems yeah. to have gotten dumbed down a little bit. <laughs> that was a, yeah, he really has. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. You, you really yeah. have dumbed down a bit. <clears throat> we haven't even mentioned uh, the I chaperone see, yet. I see him every now and then. He's like a lurker every now and then. Every now like and a, then. He's an stalking appearance. you and yeah. everyone else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. at every appearance. Uh, uh, Triple H, the chaperone. <laughs> yeah. What's the movie about? It's uh, It's... Right up your alley. It's a family movie. Um, <laughs> family movie. Yeah, it's a, yeah. You guys ever watch that show, Modern Family? Sure. Got, uh, Ariel Winter plays the daughter in that show. She plays my daughter in this movie, and uh, I play a guy that went to prison, gets out, and he's kind of lost contact with his wife and his kids, and wants to get them back, but uh, you know things don't work out so well. The daughter wants nothing to do with him, and he almost goes back to crime. And at the last second, he changes his mind, ends up as a chaperone on his daughter's field trip, and. Uh, the money from the bank robbery that he was about to be a part of ends up on the bus, and the bad guys are chasing them in in New Orleans because they think it was a setup. So he's on so a, it's nice guy. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a nice guy. A, a nice, it's a nice wholesome movie. <laughs> no, it's, it's 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 a good. You know, it's one of those movies. I think if you've got a young teenage kid or a tween, you could take them to. Uh, they'll enjoy it, and you won't feel like I just. Absolutely wasted an hour and a half of and my you, life. You didn't have to put on a tutu or wings. I did not have to put on a tutu <laughs> or wings. More wings. But I guarantee <laughs> there's a scene where someone gets punched and his feet go all the way up and, and you see his feet in the camera and he, straight up in the air. I guarantee he punches someone no, straight actually, up in the air. I don't believe that there's one, there's a whole, not a whole lot of fighting in this movie, but really? uh, there is one scene where I, I do actually punch a guy and he does go up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> but in all fairness, when we shot it, I shattered his nose. Oh, shit. Oh, you fucked up? Uh, That's yeah, some Von Cards, Von Card Van Damme shit. You made a bad mistake. A little too close on the uh, tight shot of it. Oops. Yeah, I caught Oops. him right in the end of the nose, and that's that was that yeah. was almost uh, a slight case of 
murder there, that whole <laughs> bone up in the nose thing there, yeah. my friend. Uh, yeah, well, got well, big we, fist. Yeah. Good thing we got it on that take. Now, you know, are you yeah. are you are you done? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I'll be back shortly. Um, just uh, took some time off. I made two movies for the company, and then I tore my bicep. And uh, ironically, I leave wrestling to make a movie, and I tear my bicep. But yeah, right. Well, it was an injury I'd had for a couple of years. Just kept nagging, and then it finally just gave when I was Jesus. making the movie. But you, um, oh. I I tore that, had some surgery and stuff. So I've been out for a little while. We, but we, I'm, I'm headed back. We, we to this day talk about your injury where your leg uh, muscle rolled up like a yeah. shit. Oh god, yeah. You ever hear this just, one? Uh, I we, saw it. We bring this up all the fucking yeah. time because we can't believe you. And he just back tendon and, and he muscle. limped out. That, he just limped out. He of the pulled ring. the muscle to the point that the thing rolled all the way up, right? I, I tore it. I completely tore my quad off the bone at the knee, and it rolled up my thigh. Can you oh, imagine? How do you come back from that? Live TV, and I finished the match. Uh, yeah, man. That's unbelievable. And them motherfuckers, this is why I always say the, the wrestling. I, I've been a wrestling fan my entire life, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, the greatest actors slash stuntmen the, ever, like the shit they do, and they always got to go to, right after a match, they run to a doctor back there Oof. to have somebody push something back in, <laughs> fix something. But you know what uh, I and also that. remember lines. Like, they're not fucking Shakespearean, but they remember fucking lines. Yeah. And they remember, it's it's a great it's, it's a great thing. And the thing, choreography man. of... Uh, yeah, if an actor tore their quad, the, uh, that movie is yeah, shut yeah, down yeah, for like done. six weeks. Tom what? Cruise t <laughs> tears a quad. You well, can't fake doing a, a like a monkey salt. On top of a dude laying on the ladder, like there's nothing. Right, right. And you have 290 pounds and you're flying. Yeah, I'll tell you what makes gravity it is gravity. <laughs> what makes it even harder, and what this is what people don't get about what we do is then they watch you do that and they go, oh my god, how do these guys make it through that? You got to do it tomorrow. Right. Yeah, do it. Not you know do it mean? again. You're do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the fucking thing. People don't. This is a one of the. There's a lot of differences between when I watched it. I tell you what, they don't have anymore that I think they should have. It is jobbers. They mm. don't. It's like, why every week do I watch you fight John Cena? Mm -hmm. Then there's a pay per view of him watching fighting John Cena. But before it would be Rudy, Rudy uh, Diamond. Of oh, the guys or, that come out in the tights and the yeah. the wrestling. I, 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 uh, I agree singlet. with you. We, we have this discussion all the time, and it's it really really comes down to just ratings. It really comes down like to like watching being, you beat the shit out of some nobody, just dragging him around, yeah. mushing his face. Yeah. Well, Jose Estrada, and, and then wait, yeah. and then Johnny, Johnny Rods, remember those guys? Johnny Rods. Punch him in the face, yeah. right? Get on top, one, two, and then pull him up, and the guy's limp, <laughs> and he just he <laughs> just to abuse him. Yeah. Some more. Oh, yeah. that's just despicable. He does the that's finish. absolutely despicable. He does, like, he does the finishing move seven times on the guy. <laughs> it's just yeah. why? Why? They all look like that. What's <laughs> yeah. that? Oh, Sam Roberts really taking a beating in that ring. <laughs> wow. I you know what the best one? Uh, maybe remember, not remember, as creepy. Remember S.D. Jones? <laughs> S.D. Special Jones. What's the best guy who lost every week? Greatest jobber that ever lived. But uh, Kurt Henning used to be a jobber. I remember when stars with jobbers and the WWF would go to WCW and become not jobbers. They become really good and then come back. And now they're fucking actually wrestlers. Yeah. But it was so many. I remember the fucking jobbers. That it was great, but they don't do it no more. So it's like... I gotta watch the Miz fight a real dude. Everybody wants to And then, just and then see everybody gets to crazy. talk. There was only a few talkers. Now everybody's yapping. I like when the job wrestling. is Who's really bothering him? Yeah. Yes. Because I'm a wrestling fan. It's like you earn talking. The jobbers would come in, not say a word, but they would, they would move around like they had a shot. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, like very cocky. Stretching. They were the only one there that didn't know they were about to take uh, ass whooping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they, you know, for the first couple of minutes, they would win. They would be winning, like, oh my god, how is this? Job? And then it would Putting turn over. And then yeah, it would turn. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, oh, never saw that coming. Yeah, yeah. didn't never saw that coming. Where's uh, where's Shane? Like, what what happened with Shane? He uh, he kind of yeah, he took just off decided, on his own. Yeah, he decided he wanted to go out and try to make his own way and do his own thing. You but know? we and thought he, he had something. Life. When he came in here, we're like, okay, you're leaving wrestling. What are you doing? And we thought he was going to announce some big, you know, job. Politics. Something. No, he, he had already, you, he's trying to do his own thing. He's got a couple of gigs uh, going on. He's got, like, um, a company that uh, does uh, represents athletes uh, through Europe. And, like, he's got a bunch of golfers oh, and stuff. Oh, so he's and doing then, all right. And then he's also... Um, He's creating a company that is going to... In China, there's no pay-per-view distribution. 
and he's trying to become the platform in China to distribute pay per view. Which that's one of those things. If it hits, oh, be a few it's huge. If it doesn't hit, it, you know, I mean, the, the difficult thing about it is you, it's a communist country, right? So yeah. you have to be yeah, careful. It's Chinese, how you, you got to go over there and deal with them. Right, yeah. yeah, eventually they can say this is great. Uh, this is ours now. Thank yeah, you very thank much you. for take, coming. Take a hike. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> this he's is gonna, the people's. Then he's gonna be knocking muscle, on and muscle him right out of the country. <laughs> and he's gonna be knocking on Vince's door. <laughs> he's gonna have to live. So let's be, let's be honest, sir. Oh uh, wow, we got uh, how how awful how awful is this idea? How much are y'all begging him to just come back and stop this nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you know, I hope he's successful. I mean, you know, I mean, he's, he's trying hard, and you know, I I understand that trying to make your own your own way and make your own name. His dad has like to leave that. WWE yeah. to him. It's it's but, it's, it's, it's hey, destiny. Man. Patrice, Patrice, we got we have William oh. H Macy outside, and he only has a few minutes. Uh, so how it. are we gonna do this? Triple, you you want to stick around? What do you want to sure, do? Sure, I'll hang. All right, you know William H Macy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought you were talking to Patrice. <laughs> yeah, get him in here. William there H. He Macy. Is. How are you, sir? Hello, sir. All right. We got a full house today. Yeah, I know. Triple right? H from very the WWE. You got Patrice O'Neill, very funny comic. Bill Burr, very funny comic. Anthony, God damn, OB. What a head of hair on you. Jesus. How about Pleasure to meet you, sir. He's dressed just like the other show. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's that's definitely. I would assume that that is uh, hair for the role. I would assume yes. that's hair for the role. For shameless. But that's good that you can grow a head of hair like that. The Jesus. ladies like it. I got to say. I don't doubt it. <laughs> yeah, my wife. Yeah. Like, Damn, I can't grow hair like that. Anymore. That's the best part of being an actor. No matter how you look, you can say no. It's just for a role. Yeah, it's for yeah. a role. Yeah. 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 Yeah, good. yeah, the reason I'm so toasted in the morning is for research. It's research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was reading something. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, your your character uh, on Shameless uh, drinks. Yeah, drinks a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, now you you stopped drinking. Volume. Yeah, turn up his volume. Uh, Someone roadie that mic. Right, right. <laughs> Erock, help him out. Help out uh, William H Macy. Shouldn't have to do that himself. He's a big star. Well, yeah, his character drinks a little bit. Yeah. Yes, I, uh, I, I've been known to drink a bit myself. I'm taking a little bit of a break for it. It turns out I like drinking a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, because uh, I was reading that you, you kind of stopped and uh, you're, what are you, a Scotch man? I do like Scotch. You like a good Scotch? You can tell by the color of my hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it seems to do the follicles well. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while, I think it's a good idea to. I, I've suddenly realized I have limited number of brain cells left, and perhaps I should marshal my forces in just the kind of uh, twilight of my <laughs> twilight. <laughs> well, you seem to be able to uh, work. Um, you, you know, so it's, it must not be out of control. <laughs> What was the I mean, first part? Well, yes. no, he's able to work. He's done a, he has, he has a great what? body of work. I mean, it's yeah. not like it's gotten in the, getting in the way. Well, it's it's great to play a character that's lit up all the time. I mean, for the first time in my life, sometimes I'll hold the line so I can make more faces. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Mm. It's a it's a great thing. I, we, Frank, the guy I play, is a drinking alcoholic. He's an addict. He'll take anything. So every single scene is just, <laughs> there's no wrong possible in that role. Are, are you going to get up off the floor and act? Because I'm yeah. I'm early in Shameless. The yeah. first couple episodes, you don't see uh, William H. No, the well, you see. He's on the floor sleeping. Okay. And I'm like, what is he gonna, when is, <laughs> it's his show. When is he going to start acting? <laughs> it's a contractual thing. I said I want to uh, get a lot of breast in the okay. highway. <laughs> no, I, I I bring that up because everyone says no. It, it becomes uh, you know you know you're way well, you'll more see in it. A lot more. But I'm only two episodes to. in, and so far you know the Did rest you see of the, the character where it went to Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dropped me off in Canada. Yeah, the rest of the rest of the characters are holding their own certainly and then William H. Macy shows up to sleep on the floor that's what that's so far what I've seen my yeah, entrance into the series yes yeah. unconscious <laughs> yes mumbling in the you right know now. you've made the big time when you can sleep and get paid big dollars. <laughs> right. that is the yeah. ticket right yeah. there yeah is that what made you sign on you're like all right I get to sleep for the first three, three episodes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally chill we're just yeah. beating him up he's a great actor obviously <laughs> uh, shameless is based on a British show I did not know this it's a great series too same title uh, yeah uh, and we've got some of the same people working on ours. The creator, the thing Paul has been helping with us, and the guy that directed their pilot directed our pilot. Mm -hmm. It's at once the same and completely different. Right. It's an American version, and I believe, like uh, like The Office, it's a it's a successful transfer. Yeah. Are you glad it's uh, not on a, a network that you're able to 
really go go the full distance because sometimes shows seem like they have so much potential, but they put them on a network and it's like, ah, come on, I want to hear realistic speech. I want to hear some real language. It's a double-edged sword. On one hand, on the networks, you make the serious money because they <laughs> do so many more. Uh, but you're right. Uh, having written for television a good bit, it's tough. You, you can have no language, no... No Real, drinking no sex, for the most no, part. Yeah, right. I once yeah. wrote a thing where a Nothing. fourteen-year-old girl was smoking a cigarette. They said, "You're joking, right?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's wouldn't quite, even uh, consider it. <laughs> like it never happens. Yeah, fourteen-year-olds. There's something smoke about cigarettes. just taking reality out of uh, uh, network television. I know, which is uh, not only really can insulting. people not smoke cigarettes, but if they do smoke cigarettes, they better die. Mm. <laughs> 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 You know this uh, this shameless. They're smart too. It it opens up with uh, William H Macy's teenage. Is she a teenager? She's probably in her early twenties, I guess, running right. the household, just walking around trying to get everyone ready because you know he's irresponsible. He's drunk somewhere, and she's walking around the house in just a t t shirt, no bra. And I'm Very like, okay, attractive. I I can handle this show. Oh, she's Very fine smart. Looking at Emmy Rossum. She's that. And then she she's the naked by the end of the first episode with the, with the guy from the club having sex on the floor. I should warn you already that you're going to see me naked. Too. <laughs> oh, I was going to bring that up. That's the one episode I saw. My girl was like, yeah, William H. Macy's in this. You know, I love this so guy. Sorry. And then I see your ass, and I was oh, just did? like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, it beats working. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was bad enough in his boxers trying to get out that window. Yeah. Uh, is in, this in the, the hotel? Uh, <laughs> that was great. We're, okay, all right. We're, <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to hold back. We're all huge fart. No, who is it? Huge fart. Great line in a thousand it. times. Say, Mr. Smith. They go who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who? <laughs> just every what a just a catastrophe of screw ups on the. Uh, on that character's part, which oh, is yeah. just... What a brilliant character. It's like a, a despicable yet such a sympathetic character. And I think uh, you, you've you pulled that off so well over the years in a lot of the, the characters you've played. Not that it's a typecasting or anything, but um, like the the other one. What was the one? Uh, Boogie uh, the cooler. Nights. The, yeah, Boogie Nights was another prime the example of was just a great this poor too. son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Well, it uh, turns out if you can do that well, you can have two homes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> apparently so. <laughs> God bless you. Yeah. Did, did he just him. nicely say, I'm fucking rich? <laughs> yes. Good yeah. guy, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to practice doing shit like that. I think yeah. that's what he said. Yeah, you, you, you just say it in a matter-of-fact way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I sympathize my way yeah. to two homes, my friend. In, yeah. uh, in the cooler, <laughs> you were able to take that whole kind of you know loserish character, but that was a leading role. For yeah. you, and uh, it kind of it, it turned around uh, during that movie where you turned into more of a a winner. Well, are you a method actor, by the way? Are you like when you work in? Are you like a drunk guy? And I can't like when the guy says cut, you're not like hey, so I like life. Or are you like still fucking <laughs> drunk guy? Like were you Fargo the whole time? When you were in Fargo? <laughs> Fargo. <laughs> no, no, I. I don't do that, and I, actors who do that are really boring to do. <laughs> Got it. Tell a joke or something. I know, it's just acting. It's not, you don't have to I, have I've never Don't take yourself so that. seriously. To me, any, you know, I mean, it made a few movies here, and it, there's so much waiting around, you would be off camera more in that character than you would be on yeah. camera. It, it, I so never I have understood some that. Fun. I can't yeah. have fun. I have to stay in this character. I'm a serial mm -hmm. killer. Yeah. It's, and it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help in the end? No, it's exhausting and it doesn't help. It just annoys the crew. <laughs> <laughs> they probably want a human being there to, to deal with. And That's the most important actual. fact is you can still have two homes without it. That's yeah, right. see? So. It seems to have worked. i got to ask you something Something we were all curious about in uh, Boogie Nights. A line you said, whether it was a flub or not. Uh, she has a, an ass in her cock. That's right. Uh, <laughs> was that a flub? <laughs> I did take one. I said it correctly. Take two. Uh, Paul Anderson said, you said um, ass in her cock. I said, I did. I'm so sorry. Um, take three, I did it right. Take four, I did it again. He said, you did it again. I said, I didn't. I swear to you, I didn't. <laughs> so... Uh, it ended up in the film. There was some, uh, there was some hidden truth in it. Uh, I guess. Well, you know. a cock, yeah, like is, was, a cock is, is, is a is 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 a pussy. Like it's a it's a street lane. Since when? Four yeah. yeah. Right? Wait, who's who? You've been talking. To I'm saying. Three? I'm telling you. Pimp talk. A cock. Is a is a twat. As the official brother of the room, <laughs> yes, he's telling I'm just you. telling you. That's white why people are going to pick up on this. I think in it was more years. like yeah, yeah. that's a two-year buffer period we yes. got to go through as white yeah. people <laughs> to pick up on black vernacular. So I William H Macy was ahead of his time in that <laughs> fucking movie. <laughs> no, he was trying was, to help you out, William. That would be something that character would have done. It's like to screw up because yeah, you're just so, so frustrated angry. in that moment that you're, yeah. you're screwing up. I think that that was uh, probably. 
Yeah. <laughs> More of the angle they were going for there, Patrice. <laughs> were, you, were you ever afraid of, even though the characters, uh, though they had similarities, were a lot different, were you ever, ever afraid of becoming typecast as like, here's this guy, you know, this poor sure. sap kind of guy? Really? Sure. And, and Still what, am. Did, did uh, you, are you really? Well, yeah. Because this kind of something well in Hollywood, they'll certainly ask you to do it again. Do it again, you know, right? Be well, this role, the cooler different. is a good example. Mm -hmm. I turned that film down about three times. Great I thought movie. I got to call a moratorium on this loser character right. that I'm doing, but it was too good to turn down. That's why, mm -hmm. I like Frank Gallagher, the character I'm playing mm -hmm. now, he's he may. He's certainly a loser, but he's got a lot of power to him. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not it's not the pathetic no. being no, stepped not at all. on not loser. At all. No, uh, that you, know, you usually play. I, I, yeah. I realize we haven't even really explained Shameless in your in your own words. What's the what's the show about? It's tough. I play Frank Gallagher, the uh, addicted alcoholic parent of six kids. Uh, they make their way through the world as best they can. Hilarity ensues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get guidance. From, I'm on board. Um, I'm going to watch. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> i got to say, it's great. It I, really is a great show. I don't show. like anything, and I particularly <laughs> usually don't like the stuff I'm in. This is fantastic. So was that your reaction when you got when you first got offered the project? I mean, because I, I would think that you have yourself a stack of scripts outside your door every day. I'm glad you think that. No, that, that doesn't happen. Really? Outside what level do you have doors, to get to? Two doors, Bill. Two doors on both coasts. <laughs> right. I think there are about four actors in the world that get, have the choice of anything they want to do. I'm not one of them. Um, I, I No, I liked it immediately. I read the script by John Wells. It was a fantastic script. And then I saw the series, the British series, and I was sold. Oh, wow. Do you have a trouble uh, changing the character a little to adapt to you uh, when you see uh, a series that is being adapted from a British series, I would think it's kind of hard not to try to almost do an impression of the guy. Well, I stopped watching. It was oh, you did. It's good enough that I realized I better not watch it. I did that with trailers now, because movie trailers give, give away, away too much information. Movie, yeah. So uh, if I have an on-demand movie and I'm like, I'm not sure if I want to see that, and I hit the trailer, I'm like, okay, good enough, I'm watching it. Like two seconds They in. show you all the way up to the resolution of the third act. Yeah, I don't, yes. I don't need to see that. I don't know why they do that. The it's best one ever. The best one ever was Speed 2, when they actually showed them getting off of the boat and <laughs> running around the island. So it just killed the whole suspense of how are we going to stop the boat? It's like, well, obviously they stop it they somehow. They figured it out, right. right. That was another thing with, uh, what was that, Tom <coughs> Hanks on the island uh, movie there? Castaway. 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 Oh. During the trailer... I mean, they show him back home and trying to get into uh, with this relationship <laughs> with his, his ex-girlfriend. It was like, well... They show the oil tanker picking him up. No, he gets off the island. And right. the whole thing that he's going to kill himself or yeah, something sure or, or live the there island. forever. Right. It just... Uh, trailers, they really have just destroyed... Uh, Movie watching. And they is don't it, destroy is there a, neighbor will. Is there a Hollywood... <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 is there a Hollywood stigma... To doing TV after you're doing movies your whole careers, do, do they look at you like, like I can't help it, but I look at Chris, Christian, uh, what's his name there? Slater. Oh, Slater. Slater. Yeah. Like, uh oh, no. like, I, like, to, like you know what I'm saying, but is, is Hollywood look at it like, oh shit, William H is doing, sh oh, he's on Showtime. Could be. I, definitely, there used to be, but used to. Yeah. In all honesty, I gotta say right now, I think the best stuff being done anywhere is being done on television. Yep. I gotta agree with you. I see and, the uh, the little indies that come out every once in a while. There's one that's great. There's a, a a film or two each year that comes out that's great. But the most challenging stuff, the best stuff, is on television. And I think you're cable. seeing a lot more actors uh, with reputable careers yeah. uh, going to, uh, especially the cable outlets and uh, things like that, uh, and putting out some good stuff. You oh, know, totally. Buscemi, Steve Buscemi. He's fantastic, uh, going to his isn't he? show, yeah, uh, uh, Boardwalk Empire. Also, I really like to act. I like to do yeah. it a lot. And when you do a TV show, you get to act a lot. And mm -hmm. as you were saying, when you do a feature, you get to sit around and wait a lot. Yeah, so there's not a whole lot of working involved no. sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Triple H has to go, oh, but he doesn't it. know how to leave because <laughs> <laughs> all the mics are on and William H Macy's talking. But yeah, we're I here. Wish you got to do TV because I'm a huge fan for him and uh, I, I, I really enjoy your work. Yeah, Thank so you. but I love unfortunately, I do have to go. What show are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. They get people out there tell me what Just telling you what to do. Go in that room and talk. That's Just give, uh, give I get uh, excited Sam to come on things like and this. And, <laughs> yeah. Other than that, it's just a TV show. Well, Triple H was, uh, you know, is promoting The Chaperone. Uh, yes. It's in theaters today, right? Yep. Comes out today. Very cool. All right. Very cool. Triple H. All right, guys, thanks for the time.
Tell the, guys, uh, tell the guys we said hi. We, I will. We, we really if they like remember us. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. Tell, tell, Vince, said to say hi. tell Vince thanks for that XFL game day gig. <laughs> <laughs> should bring you guys back, do some more stuff. You <laughs> really fun, should. Right? Yeah. That was right. 10 years ago already. Fuck. Thanks was it 10 years? Okay. Yeah, it just oh uh, 10 years has passed for the XFL. Wow. We might need the XFL again if they yeah, lock out, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I'll really? tell you, it felt like 10 years that f two months. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ooh. crazy time. Yeah, right? It was some yeah. wild times there. Yeah, right. William, we've done some TV, you know. Yeah, a little bit. A little TV ah, well, what, are, what are you going to do? <laughs> that when, when it wasn't right. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, thanks. All right, thanks, we'll see you. Take it easy, man. Oh, oh, God. God. Yeah, and uh, shameless. Uh, Showtime. Showtime, yeah. Uh, another person on instant feedback cool. going, look, uh, William H. Macy isn't in the show, but he's telling us that he's going to be in the show a lot more. This guy's two uh, episodes in. Yeah. Saying that Macy's just kind of laying around s no, so far. You'll, you'll see more of me than you want to. <laughs> I like the fact that, uh, you know what else is good about th th this this time we're living in is uh, on demand and being able to you know, look at some of these shows on Showtime without having to be there uh, and watch it live. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's a lot more convenient. I know. Have yeah. you gone back and tried to watch television where you have to sit through the commercials? Oh, God. It's undoable. It really is infuriating. Yeah. <laughs> They're louder. There's more television than there is programming. It's yeah. Uh, and then I like when the local spot jumps in and the sound is so bad because it's like some local car dealership I know. that they went to. And I, I just love that they decide, they thought if they made it louder, that would like, like commercials were already <laughs> yeah. annoying. Let, let's, let's, you know, <laughs> yeah. let's we'll badger them with that. I, I, I've heard they actually do things now, you know, because, because of TV. TiVo, you don't get credit uh, as far as like ratings. Like TiVo doesn't count because they know people fast forward, oh, fast and they have this thing the now where you, if you fast forward these advertisers, they have like ways of like when you fast forward, they'll still have their product, so you still kind of see it yeah, on some yeah. level. It's it's oh, really uh, gotten to a psycho level. That's why you know, hey, Showtime, gotta love it. Yeah, subscribe, because pay for it, you, and you don't have to. Yeah, because uh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> you, yeah, you're not dealing with commercials. Yeah. You get the whole show. It's not like you, you're getting 20 minutes of programming and 20 minutes of commercial. Hate that, too. I know. Our show's 55 minutes long. My wife's on a TV show, and hers is sometimes 42 minutes mm -hmm. is an hour. Yeah. 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 Who's your wife? Felicity Huffman. She's yeah. in Desperate Housewives. Yeah. yeah of course. Oh, this is delicious. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> would you, would you, say your wife is would you have got that without Shameless, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think Fargo got him that one. <laughs> yeah, Fargo. Oh, yeah, the Fargo, movies. Fargo, maybe. You, you picked the wrong show. Come on, we're all out of our leagues. We all know it. <laughs> it Just stop. doesn't hurt to be married. <laughs> Oh, that's great, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, She's so, also on Sunday night, too. We just barely missed oh, really? with each other. That's that's good that that didn't happen. Yeah, that would uh, probably cause some uh, That would be friction. another show idea. Some, there you go. Some friction. Right. <laughs> and uh, I guess no haircut in the future. Well, you gotta live with, got to live couple, with that. Uh, I might do an indie. Uh, I've got a couple of films. We're on our hiatus right now, so it... Remains to be seen whether I can keep. I'm that sure they can make a wig out of that, like oh, no. a fucking shameless wig. Oh, that looks pretty. That looks pretty. Wait, so he's keeping the hair waiting to see if there's another season. No, nah, he said he's gonna do a movie. He's not playing nah, around. He's keeping the hair for shameless. Ah, we're gonna do another season. They yeah. haven't picked it up yet. But do I'm you? Sure. It's obvious. Are you that always it's... acting? Or do you take time off right or now? Something? Yeah, much more than I wish. Really? Sure. Yeah. Oh. But Felicity Cause... Huffman being on a popular show, you could take some time off. There's nothing wrong with. Digging in her pockets. Hey, you know, <laughs> that's true, man. Fall in love with a rich Y'all get divorced, she's going to fucking get you. Bad <laughs> mother. Oh, no. Take her money now, save it, and give it back to her when she's <laughs> after the divorce. I live in California, man. It's our money. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Oh, brutal. Well, wouldn't wish that on anybody, believe me. Yeah, yeah it went through it. Ah, I mean, went through that like the, years ago, and... Oh boy! He's been free for a little while now. Took a while. Yeah, for many years. He's been free for no, I mean free from the the check oh, writing. from having to write that check. Yeah, hey, free oh, from the check writing. Can, can I ask a, a Fargo it's question, terrible. sir? I'm sure. a I'm a big fan of of the Cohen brothers. Yeah. I I love the Cohen brothers. What uh, is is their process like? Is are they cool? Are they are they weird guys? Or like is it is just is it a fun thing or is it a a really professional thing, you know, I, like I don't, you know what I mean? Uh, like, they yeah. cool? Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> they are weirdos. <laughs> they are sort of uh, film geeks. They've seen every film ever made. They are exquisitely prepared. They're very fun to be on the set with. 
it's about it's about the best working experience you could have. They're I, not they're not mentioned when people talk about great filmmakers, man. I think they're but they make they make fantastic films. Yeah. When you, I mean, if people start talking, they'll they'll be they'll talk Martin Scorsese's, they'll talk uh 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 she's a Spielberg. You you don't hear the Cohen brothers. You do to people who love movies, but you yeah. don't. I mean, I think they're under the radar still. The Cohen mm-hmm. brothers, and mm-hmm. they make great films. Miller, Miller's Crossing is. One of the best That's, gangster movies ever oh, made. True man. Grit was fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I thought oh, I think their their place in history it. is assured. Looks great. Patrice, yeah. no, not so much. But I'm never gonna get. T- I, I I love them, and I need you to do me a favor, sir, is yeah. to oh uh, let them know that I don't remember any black goddamn characters in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need you to do is just say, sirs, Cohen brothers. Feet, yeah. I, re- I, I remember. Just text them right now. <laughs> I remember Fargo. I remember Miller's Crossing. Every great little the there's Dane. no black people in Fargo the, no I'm saying I'm saying <laughs> it's movie, just nothing I mean the city means Fargo <laughs> just uh, what I'm saying put one yeah, in the Coen brothers are into realism so like, they're gonna do Fargo they put they, a Chinese guy in fucking Fargo yeah. there's Chinese food made a, <laughs> everywhere there's Chinese <laughs> restaurants everywhere for Chinese. I got sushi it's, in Nebraska it's hard to love love the Coen brothers like I do and they and there's just no no black characters in there they've never pushed one they're playing the percentage I mean they, they they fucking put over um Javier Bardoom, this foreign guy. They put him over. Just put one black character over. That's all I'm saying. Patrice O'Neill. <laughs> no, I'm not even saying me. <laughs> I don't know anyone? if I can pull it off, oh, but yeah. they're, they're great. But I'm saying it's hard to stay focused. That's you, ever, all. you ever see him? Uh, you ever see him get uh, upset with each other on the set? Anything like that? It's kind of no. got to be hard to work. One's kind of like in charge though. Like they, they, it, yeah. it's never directed by them. It's like directed by one of them, <laughs> and then the other ones like. The well, writer or something. Ethan writes more and Joel directs more, but they both do both. I mean, they're both. They're amazing, set, man. They're, 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 they're damn shot. amazing. And oh, one of them's nice. married to uh, the, the star of Fargo, uh, Francis McDormand. McDormand, yeah, right, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What a great incestuous business. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love they this made business. Movies before they got married, though. Ah, uh, uh, they they said it again. They were making films together before. Oh, Francis McDormand, right back in. But Fargo is her big, her big one though, right? She won an Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. What is your favorite role you ever did? Like, just like you go, man, I, I, you I felt would, good when you after you did that one. It's like naming your favorite child. You can't quite do that. But uh, I did a little film called Happy Texas that I just adored. Nobody ever saw it, but I liked mm-hmm. it. Um, there's a mammoth film called State in Maine. I had a great time in that. Mm-hmm. What? I did one of the Jurassic Parks. That was yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, right. you did the, yeah. one of the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Holy fuck balls. <laughs> they were just running out of dinosaurs. <laughs> How about we invent one with a fucking oh, hey. that has a smiley face and a hat and is. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to make friends with this guy. No, I'm uh, saying he knows. Know, but he maybe oh doesn't. Goddamn God. knows. What was your favorite? Like, uh, uh, I want to I want to go back to Happy Texas actually because you okay. said you liked that film. Yeah. Why didn't anyone see it? I don't know. It did, is it a it film got... that people should have saw? Yeah, it's it's great. Mm. You can rent it. It's out. But there. is it? Uh, was it a marketing issue? Was the subject matter maybe not for the mainstream? Or? No, I think a marketing issue. And yeah. so, you know, you can make a great film that no one wants to see. Right. I don't can think anybody's have, ever seen, seen a movie that had the word that had the word happy in it. I like. I will say that I don't know if there's any happy, happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Come on, man. That's not fair. <laughs> I mean, like, a, because happy in serious movies is always turns into something very sh- sh- but weird. Like, yeah, uh, but that's can you tell? By the way, can you tell when after you've made a movie when you see the marketing? Can you tell at this point? Going, oh god, they're not marketing this right. This is gonna tank. Can you tell? As you like, you're sitting at home watching. If you're excited about a movie and you're watching the advertising and just the way they're marked, like, did you know as they were marketing Happy Texas, like they're doing this all wrong? You know, it took me a long time to get to this, but the people that do marketing do have a talent. Right, they're mm-hmm. good at it. In the history of film, no director has ever said, "I love the way they're releasing my film." It's just never <laughs> happened. Okay, yeah, everyone's. But uh, yeah, I, I've seen it where I thought they. Uh, the marketing people 
try to sell it as something that it's not, and uh, that well, never works. Well, my point is that it's got to be frustrating for you. You know the movie <laughs> Happy Texas is a really good film, and then you see other films that everyone's seen, and you know it's a piece of crap I know. film. That's got to well, be just infuriating as an actor. For a while, the really independent good... film market was a viable market. And right, you, you, right, People right. would see it, but now that's... Wait, because of the new technology, that's in the me- we, that's a mess. We we have to unfortunately wrap up, but uh, shameless. Uh, I gotta acknowledge Joan uh, Cusack is in this oh, film. She's, she's Joan amazing. Cusack. She's an amazing she actress. Is amazing. She's still and, cutie pie too. And uh, I'm I'm being reminded because my girl's way ahead in Shameless. I'm two episodes in, and she's all in. And uh, there's a scene coming up with you and Joan uh, Cusack. Yeah. And a, uh, a very large dildo, sir. <laughs> <laughs> very large. <laughs> this is how I want to end the interview. Oh jeez. <laughs> and Showtime. <laughs> By the way, is making a real big push, like to yeah. challenge oh, yeah, for yeah. the dominance of uh, this whole. Well, know, they're doing great stuff. Yeah, 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 but there's a, there's a scene coming up there, William. Oh, there's a when, couple of scenes. Wait, Jones, you see how wh- this thing ends. It's William H. Macy shameless. takes it in the poop shoot in fucking well, on Showtime, uh, baby. He's got uh, ass on that cock. Yams it up to poopster. Well, but it's from Joan Cusack wearing the big uh, the big dildo. I know. <laughs> this oh, is dude. how crazy this uh, the show is. <laughs> I knew her when she was a young teen girl. I babysat her. I, I saw oh, you do man, an interview you? where you discussed that. Uh, that's right. Thanks for reminding me. Wow. Yeah, what, to... Joan Cusack? You babysitted Joan Cusack? Yeah. He's and now she's giving it to you with a dildo. Cusack. Cusack. What's her name? Q. 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 Uh, Sack. You lucky I remember some of these white people's names. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky, lucky he's not William J. Macy, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give me a fucking so break. Funny. I know who she is. But used to babysit Joan Cusack. Yeah, I am. <laughs> She's, uh, that she's a weird she's place. Now, she, now she's jamming <laughs> some of his keys though. That's right. <laughs> That's fucking and, hilarious. And I'm hearing it's a, I'm it hearing it's a very. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm hearing it's a very large dildo. Uh, there. Something. Oh god. But this show, Shameless. I'm yeah. telling you, it's one of the best shows to come around in Shameless. a long time. Sundays, uh, 10 p.m. on Showtime. On Showtime. God damn. What can you say, William H Macy? We've. Uh, Wait. Uh, now we've, I'm getting. We've a... quoted you a thousand times. Oh, yes. uh, on and off the air. Oh good. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh jeez, it's, oh, it's my deal. Right? That whole that oh. whole time, the the anger with the ice scraper. That was I was just going to say that the best emotional scenes without a word being spoken yeah. starts out just yeah I got to scrape my I'm not getting the fucking money. <laughs> like it's just perfectly done. It's a great film. Yeah, he goes, he, he goes all the way man. through the anger to then the, just the, the, the way you swing it, the sadness. And, and oh, you've heard it brilliant. a thousand Absolutely times. Absolutely brilliant. I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times when when you're sitting uh, on that bench in front of the door. Or answering your son about what's going on, and, <laughs> and the dead father's in the trunk, and this, and you're just like, okay, yeah, no, no, everything's fine. I'm gonna go to bed. Yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. Hope it all goes away. It's oh, so and the guy's tragic. trying to get, he's trying to get the numbers off the the burnt sienna, <laughs> yeah. or whatever thing, and he's just saying, okay, okay, yeah. no, I can't read the numbers. Yeah, all right, okay. I'll fax him right. No, no, I mean message him. <laughs> oh shit, it's amazing. It's great writing. That's not great writing. not a week. Uh, character in that acting. movie, man. This, that, that's not like improvising any of that. Like, that's, no, that, no, no, no. I couldn't imagine don't. anyone God, else playing phenomenal. that, though. It's, it's, phenomenal. You do such a great job that that character just comes right off the, the screen at you. It's You, you do such a it's, perfect job playing that. I feel like it's a comedy, too. Yeah. Is, there, is there a story, I, sir, of, of you, of how you got that movie? Is there, like, isn't it a... There's a either somebody turned it down, you got it, or you fought really hard to get I it, or fought hard. I was a workaday actor. I went in to read for a, a smaller role, and they said, "Do you want to read uh, Jerry?" And I said, "Yeah." So I went out into the other room, worked on it. They said, "That's real good. You want to come in tomorrow?" And I said, "Yeah." So I was up all night. Every actor I know was at my house running the lines with me. I went in the next day and I read again. And because I knew, I knew not only was it a great script and it was the Coen brothers, but it was my role. I yeah. mean, I could just see it. it was written for a portly bald guy. Really? So it didn't work that way, but I knew it was my He was such a, a great, like, and then they went to New York. salesman. Did, 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 you, did you feel what when after you did the audition, did you walk out going, I, I nailed that, I got I that? Did. I did nail it, and then I found out that they were in New York auditioning, so I got my skinny Lutheran ass on an airplane. <laughs> and, uh, it's not an apocryphal story. I walked in and I said, I'm scared you're going to screw this up by giving the role to somebody else. I read again. Wow. And uh, I said, I'll shoot your dog if you give this role to somebody Because <laughs> <laughs> Ethan has a dog. 
Yeah, uh, isn't that amazing? Like you still it. like yeah, yeah. I read it. It was like it was more. It was bigger than the average. Like you read and got it. It was yeah. like they had somebody else, and he just okay. would not let him go. Yeah, we, yeah. we got just, just one. Just one. One more quick thing. Was there ever any? story that you even heard from the Coen brothers as to why the character needed that money. No. No. Never. Okay, so that never was asked, never resolved. And yeah. it's not important. Yeah. Every, it's just, I've always felt everything so, you need is on the page. Yeah, yeah. He, Backstory has never I think the character it. itself, you, you realize he must have screwed something up sure. and when, needed the money. When was the last time you saw the movie? Like, we could put it on tomorrow and, and enjoy it again I easily. Just, Can I, a couple I'll, of years I'll, couple of years, I'll huh? be perfectly honest. I, I was watching it last night. <laughs> last night. Yeah. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> it's, it's, got, it's got insane rewatchability. And, it really does. And I'm telling right. you, I mean, Shameless is yep. a great show. I'm telling you, Sunday's at 10 on Showtime. <laughs> I haven't had this much fun it's, in a long time. It's a oh, great show. Great. The characters and the, the situations, it's unbelievable. Let's get him out of here before we get in trouble. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, boys. Yeah, thank you. you and you got to say it, though. you got to say it. As what? he leaves. Oh, yeah. He's fleeing the interview. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's fleeing the interview. He's fleeing the interview. Yes. He's fleeing the interview. Why don't you go talk uh, yeah. to old oh, Bill Deal? Oh, 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 he's oh, fleeing the interview. End of story. Hey, the great William H. Macy, Showtime, uh, 10 o'clock Sunday uh, nights. Uh, yeah, shameless. Going to get a quick picture and we'll be back. <laughs> Rob, bitch, rob, bitch, bitch, rob, bitch, 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 bit